You are in the fix-it phase. Do, 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 do. I'm Dave. We've got another repair here. Uh, my wife just notified me that she was running the vacuum and this ugly, smelly, nasty smell, electrical smell started coming from the machine. It started to bog out and eventually just quit. So the, 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 the body still ran, but the uh, beater quit boiling in the head. So what we did was, we need to see what's going on first. So I took this cover off. This cover just sits on here and there's clips. One, two, three, four, five. There's five clips that hold this cover on here. I took a small screwdriver and, and pried on them very lightly, you know, popped them all off and then took the cover off. There's also a belt here that fits down in it. You push the belt down out of the way. So here we have the inside. And this is a Thermax. But a lot of your your uh, vacuum cleaners will be like this. This is it's got the head on it. It has the beater and it has the, the motor that goes in it that drives the beater. And then the cord then connects to the hose at the other end over here and runs juice from the machine. So once she heard that the, the vacuum was work, working, but the head was not, shut it off. So we took the cover off. I pulled the motor out and this motor was so hot I could barely touch it. What had happened is we had gotten some fur, animal fur, plugged in the, into the fence. And this got really hot because it, it has to blow air through it and cool itself. It got too hot. It melted, probably melted the brushes inside and the motor's junk. Okay. Um, so after the motor started to get too hot and started to smoke and eventually quit, um, I pulled it out and I went to my local um, vacuum dealer, which we have a Thermax here close by. So I went and I was able to get another motor. He had one of these on the shelf. These go bad often. Usually your uh, vacuum dealers will have this sitting around because this is a, a common problem. So it's, the parts are pretty, um, you know, accessible. So I went and I got the motor. And when I got the motor, I also got a couple of drive belts. This one that was in here, um, it got hot. This belt was looking pretty peaked. It's got, you know, it's got cracks in it. It's glazed on the inside. We're going to junk, junk it. These are only two or three bucks a piece. So I got two of them just to have another one as a spare. And um, this cost me 85 bucks. So um, this is, you know, the biggest cost you're going to have. Um, it's better than buying a new one. So yeah, 85 isn't cheap, but it's a lot better. Like I said, this is about a $900 unit. This is this is better to you know just to buy one of these rather than trying to buy one of the vacuum cleaner. So this these were this is installed with three screws. It fits down in here like this. There's there's three posts with this motor sits down in. Okay. And I took the three screws out, and I pulled this out, and then I cut the wires. There's a black and a white from the back of the, the, the sweeper header, and there's a black and white that comes out of the motor. So we're going to hook those up right now while we've got it up. I have two wire nuts, boom wire nuts. And we're gonna wire these up white to white, black to black. As long as the color code matches, you're, you should be good. Make sure it's on there pretty good, nice and tight. And we'll be able to pull on this wire nut. Nope, it's not biting. Gotta fix the wires around a little bit. Try it again. That's holding. I'm going to take it back to the black. That 
these two wires with my other wire nut, like so. And our wires are connected. Okay? So, I'm now, I've also stopped, I didn't have any tape with me, so I stopped at the store and got some black electrical tape. Um, you always use this stuff, and I always think when I'm at the store and I buy an extra one, because you've got them laying around, on, you know, you won't be hunting for them all the time, because you've got so many of them, you'll be able to find one. So I grabbed them, I bought another one uh, at the store, and we're going to wrap these wire nuts up real quick, just to keep them sparking, because we don't want to, we don't want to have electrical fire going on here. So I'm going to wrap these up with some tape. strand of black electrical tape I have been told will contain 2,000 volts and I don't know if that's true or not it may even be close but my point is you don't have to eat a whole lot just make sure that the bare wires are covered and the nuts are covered okay so we got our wires connected and now we're going to set this back down here like we took it out might be a good idea to take a picture before you pull this out of here, so you know which way the the, uh, the labels and everything would go, and whether we you know how the screws are set. So I didn't do that because we're fixing this right away, and um, I will just remember how they go. Okay, here's the motor, here's the wire nuts, and here's the wire. This wire happens to be going off of the other side, so we're going to put it down underneath. Make sure when you put it down in here, it's not kinking or are pinching these wires okay there is some area down here underneath the motor that won't it's not pinching so that's where I'm going to tuck my wires and I'll put my wire nuts off to the side so they're not touching anything and that just should push right down in there nice and tight okay so now before we get it screwed down I want to put the belt on it so I'm going to put the belt on the shaft like so and then we're going to put the beater back in. Okay, you can see with the beat where the belt rides on the beater. So we're going to run that through, run that on to where the beater or the belt rides where it's supposed to. And then make sure the guy at the, the, the uh, store told me to pull these off and uh, clean these out before you install it. Because a lot of dust and hair and stuff in there. So you try to get these out because there's the bearing. You want to keep that nice and clean. You can see the dust in there. So that's clean and that's ready to go on. Let's do one to the other side. There's some junk in there. See that? You want to get that out of there. That way it doesn't bind up the bearing. Get all this hair off of here. Lots of hair you know, on the beater. That's where it ends up getting stuck. Get most of it off. Okay. It's pretty clean. The cap's clean. So now we're going to reinstall the cap, it just fits over the bearing, snaps on, and you can see how this beater goes in here, it only goes in one way, that sits down in the cradle, see, the cradle's down here, and it sits flat, and i got to clean this out too, because there's stuff in here too, make sure you get most of this cleaned out, and you put the beater back in, it's not binding up. Get all this hair out of here. I just take the screw and scrape it out so it's free of all debris. Okay, so there's the there's the rounded side of the beater. It's going to fit down in that cradle in the in the side here, and then this one is also there's the rounded side, and it's going to fit down in the rounded cradle right here. Now we're going to put the belt on first. Put the belt over top of it. Kind of hold the motor down too while you're putting this back in because you don't want it to jump out. And it's going to be tight because 
of the tension of the belt. It helps to get one side in and then go over here to this side and push it down in the slot like so. Now I'm going to rotate it here just a little bit so that the belt, belt lines up just like that. It'll find its own way. See how that aligned? It's right in the middle now. And we're on this end. Okay, now we want to put the screws in the motor so the motor doesn't jump out of here. So uh, the screws went in here, and here, and here. Alright, and we're going to put this thing back in here like so. Now putting this in plastic, so you don't want to use this too too hard, because this will overdrive them, and they will strip out the threads. So be real careful when you're doing putting things into pl plastic. You don't strip them out. Okay, that's in there nice and tight. The wires are in there good. They're out of the way. Okay, and um, we've got the wire nuts all tied up. So now we're okay. We got the head put back together, the top's on it, the rubber bumper's back on. Let's make sure it works before we go any further. Excellent. Works good. Um, everything's back in place. The, like, you can feel the, the, uh, the beaters. They're higher than this surface, which is good. That means it's, you know, touching the carpet, which we want. Um, so there you go. There's, um, there's, there's our vacuum. We paid, you know, around a thousand dollars for this in 2001 and I've managed to keep it together and going all this time. Fortunately, we've gone through a couple of motors in this head and several, well, probably half a dozen beaters and, uh, uh, several belts, but once you know how to replace them, you know, it's easy. Now, uh, you can take it to the dealer and have them do it, um, but they're going to charge you, and they may not. You may not get the. You've got to get it out there and come back, and you still have to wait for the uh, the dealer to put it back together, and then you're going to go back to pick it up, pay for it, blah blah blah. We just, I just did this. I ran down to the store, ran back here, and did this, and I'm done in 40 minutes. So we're good to go. We're ready to start uh, sweeping. Our heat beater, beater's ready to go, it's put back together, everything's hot, and uh, we're good. So, like, subscribe, and uh, tell your friends, and uh, stay tuned for the next repair.